start moving out of that. Yeah. So we know this is the first house. I, I we know this is the house that Aries grew. Uh, I had you know, then we have Taurus. Forget, we have Gemini. We have Cancer. We have Leo. We have uh, Virgo. We have Libra. And we have Scorpio. Sagittarius. Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. Pisces means completion or a whole. Okay? Aries is the principle of the warrior. It's ruled by the planet Mars, which is the energy of war. You know, and when we start getting into, you know, the ancient text, you can equate that to, to like Horus. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna try to make the connections from the planets to the deities that our ancient ancestors understood and then to the energy. Remember I told you that the planets represent what energy is influenced. The sign represents how or what method is influencing and the house represents where it's unfolding. You can look at this as the earth or an individual because you know, we're just the form of Mother Earth. We're just the form of Mother Earth. So, this can be the earth, and this is the horizon line, okay? And all of this is broken down into opposites. Everything is about balancing opposites. That's how you create, by balancing opposites. So, this is the sign of war, I mean the planet of war, this is the energy of the warrior. So, the first principle that we're looking at is Aries, which is the principle of the, um, the willingness the spiritual, the spiritual warrior, okay? That's what the Aries energy represents in that wholeness. Then we have Taurus. Taurus is the one that dictates what do we value. You know, what do we value morally and materialistically? This is what it, it, it's the, it, the, uh, what we value in life, our moral values. That's the second principle of righteousness. The third principle is the principle of understanding. That's what Gemini represents. You know, Gemini is the educator, the teacher, the communicator. That's where you get your reading, your writing. Everything about the earth is represented under one of these symbols. Then Cancer, the fourth sign. That's the principle of the nurturer. That's the one that makes our connection to the past, to our roots, our heritage, our mother. That's our mother energy. You know. Remember I said you're conceived through Aries, you take form or body, uh, you, your body develops in Taurus, your mind, your mental capacity develops in Gemini, you're born through Cancer, the mother, that's the gateway. I read last week, the two gateways, Cancer is the gateway into this earthly plane, Capricorn, its opposite sign is the gateway into the spiritual. See, that's another reason why Saturn is the supreme energy because it rules the Capricorn energy, okay? And then Leo, that's the, they connect Leo with the ego, and that is the identifier. That's the one that I did. It also, Leo also um, indicates children. It's your creative energy, you know, and it's the children, it's the energy of the children, and the rulers, okay? So what we need to understand about putting all that together is that Leo is the identifier. The one that lets us recognize us as ourselves, as the children of the creator, or the creative forces of the universe. Then we have Virgo. That's the healer. Health. Then you have Libra. That represents justice, fairness, and equality. Especially in partnerships. Then you have Scorpio. That's the energy of bonding, coming together in joint efforts to make an impact. Then you have Sagittarius, spiritual wisdom, you know, the great expander. It's, it's, a, it's the philosophical meaning about, behind everything, you know, and that's ruled by Jupiter. Then you have Capricorn, that's the energy of sacrifice, of humbleness. Then you have Aquarius, that's the energy of humanity, you know, your hum humane feeling. And then Pisces, completion, that's the compassionate. You know, that's the one that says, in order for us 
to become whole, we have to include everyone, you know, those that are in prison, those that are on drugs, those that, you know, are the outcasts of society. See? And what I'm saying here is that in order to be whole and full, each one of these 12 principles have to be enacted. And if you leave one of them out, you're still an aberrant entity. You're not full, you're not whole, you're not sacred. When you use all 12, that's what gives you your fullness, your wholeness, your sacredness. That's more or less when they say holy, you become whole. Absolutely, a holistic. Yeah. Right, because you become whole, you become, become you're full. You're energized by the circle. You're using all your energy. Right. We got all these energies in us. We identify, of course, with our sun sign, you know, but that's only a small fraction of what's going on. Right. And, um, and the job of astrology is to give you a perspective on what energies you're focusing on and what energies you know you need to pull in to make yourself whole and full. We have to use all the energy. Sometimes it's not that easy because we want to use the energies that we're used to working with. But you know we need to learn how to integrate energies. Because remember, I'll say it, if I say it once, I'll say it a thousand times. Balancing opposites is creative energy. Male, female, yin and yang, positive, negative. Every time you put two opposites together, you create energy. That's creation. That's the creation process. That's why I say we are the gods, because we are the physical beings with the spiritual capabilities through the melanin. See? And that is bringing two opposites together, the physical and the spiritual, to make the whole. If you don't make it whole, it's not complete, it's not sacred, it's not spiritual. Okay? And those are the 12 principles. And if you leave one out, then you're going against the grain of the spiritual. You're still in that physical rotation. See? That's what I meant by that. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. <laughs> okay.